Hey everybody and welcome back to our channel. Today we're going to talk about vertical videos from A to Z. How to crop your videos, how to purposely shoot vertically, expert settings, and much more. But before we start, hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel with that notification bell on to never miss another video from us. And you better stay tuned till the end of the video because we're going to announce our last video's giveaway winners and we're going to have another giveaway for this video. Let's jump in. So if you haven't noticed by now, vertical video is everywhere. It's in our Facebook feeds, it's in the Instagram stories and even on YouTube. And there's a good reason for that. Vertical videos take a lot of real estate on our phone screens. With almost 60% of video content being consumed with our phones, it only makes sense to create video content created for mobile phones, which is vertical videos. That's why brands, influencers, and marketers use this method when creating video content. When creating a vertical video, there are two ways to go with. The first way is to shoot normally and then crop your videos in post-production. This is the common way to do it usually. And the second way is to actually flip your camera when shooting and shoot vertically. Of course, there's pros and cons to each method. So let's dive deep into that. So let's first talk about the common thing to do, which is shooting normally on a wide aspect ratio and cropping it in post-production. The benefit of doing that is you get more versions of your video. You get the wide version, which you can upload it to YouTube or screen it on a TV screen. And you get the vertical video that you can utilize on social media and the different platforms like Instagram or Facebook. Sounds great, right? Well, the problem with that is that your vertical video will suffer a major quality loss in framing, composition, camera movement, and overall storytelling. Just think about it. If you originally shot your video for a widescreen TV experience, taking that width away from your composition can really hurt your final product. For example, if my idea was to take a long shot to introduce the environment and the location to the audience, now taking that shot and cropping it in post-production takes away a lot of the details that help to do that and thus hurt my storytelling. Or let's look at this close-up shot. If I try to force it into a vertical frame, we're now getting an extreme close-up and a not so pleasing frame. Now it is possible to take your wide videos and crop them successfully in post-production. All you need is a bit of a mind shift. You have to start thinking vertically at the very beginning of your video project. First, you need to figure out on which social media platform your video is going to be published. Then, according to that, you'll know which aspect ratio you'll need to take into consideration when shooting your video. For example, it could be 1x1 one one or 9x16. If you want to know all the details regarding the pixels for each aspect ratio, we have a dedicated blog article which is linked in the description below. The next thing you want to do is create guidelines on your monitor so you can actually see the vertical frame while shooting and take out all that guesswork. You can do this by turning on your guides and your camera if you have that option. Or you can do it physically by cutting out a cardboard and putting it on your monitor or taking two pieces of gaffer and sticking it on your display. Now you could focus on storytelling instead of focusing on whether or not this frame works for vertical. And here are some more useful tips while shooting your video and in post-production. Try to shoot everything wider than you usually do. Like we've said before, a close-up can turn out into an extreme close-up and a long shot can lose a lot of details when cropping it. Shoot in the highest resolution possible for that extra flexibility in post-production. Try to avoid shaky footage and fast camera movements. These will be very enhanced in the vertical versions of your video and you'll find it very difficult keeping your subject in the center of the frame. Get creative with split screens. These are very trendy these days and can really spice up your edit and make good use of a vertical format. Another common trick you can do is this. Simply duplicate your video, blur it out and use it as a background layer to your scaled down video. This way you get to keep more details but you still utilize the vertical screen real estate. And our last pro tip. Use positioning keyframes to keep your subject in frame or just use the new Premiere Pro Auto Reframe tool. Now you know everything you need to create a vertical version out of your already existing wide video. 
But what if you want to shoot the whole video vertically in camera? How would you go about doing that? And more importantly, why would you even want to? On one of our recent campaigns, we decided to shoot a video dedicated to Instagram stories and Facebook, therefore shooting it vertically in camera, which gave us the full control when deciding on framing, frame blocking and composition. Because we had a heavy duty camera, we had to build a special rig. If you have a smaller camera like a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, there are easier ways to rig it vertically. With the tripod, all you need to do is take your camera and mount it sideways, then tilt your tripod head and you have a vertical shot. If you have a camera cage, all you need to do is take a quick release plate and mount it on the side of the cage. Or just go handheld. You can figure it out with the gear you have at home. Here are some more tips when actually going out and shooting your vertical video. Because the vertical frame is so narrow, you'll have to be very precise with your camera moves to keep an ideal framing. Try to go for smaller or more controlled movements. Try to be as stable as you can. Use a tripod, a dolly or a gimbal if possible. Shakiness is very noticeable in a vertical frame. All the usual rules regarding composition still apply. Don't discard them just because you're going vertical. Using leading lines, for example, can have an even greater effect when used in a vertical composition. Have your subject move towards or away from the camera instead of moving horizontally across the frame. When using a wide lens, try lifting the camera and tilting it down. This usually helps creating depth and an overall more compelling shot. So whether you like it or not, Vertical Video is here to stay. We hope this video inspired you and now you can go out and film beautiful vertical videos and get all the benefits that comes with it. If you got any value from this video, please help us out with the YouTube algorithm and slap that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel with that notification bell on to never miss another video from us. Now let's get to the giveaway we promised you at the beginning of the video. Four lucky winners will win four Artless t-shirts. All you need to do to enter this giveaway is comment down below what do you want us to talk about next? Here are the four lucky winners from our last giveaway. Just DM us through Instagram or contact us via email. Till then, stay creative.